right here on the Muskegon Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. Dave Cackley's over yonder. Take a look here. How do you like that? What you got? That is my Fruitport Old Fashioned Days t-shirt. Fruitport Old Fashioned Days going on now nice. out in the greater community of Fruitport. Fantastic. I was given this last night for my civic, civically minded, dutiful judging of the Fruitport's Got Talent show. Right. It was, yeah. uh, it was fun. You know, I mean, yeah. it, I think it, it may have been the first time they tried a talent show at mm -hmm. uh, at this event, and they it was kind of like an opening act for their musical entertainment for the night. Okay. And they had, uh, let's see, they had a girl come out, and she sang that, um, uh, oh, come on, what's the song that all the young girls sing? Um, I have <laughs> This is my How do I know? song. My, take back my life. Oh, my, my life. You know that one. Up, yeah, that's the one. She, she did that. Something, something, yep. Thing, words. Yeah. Words, 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 words. Yeah, that was yeah. the one. Okay, yeah. And then they had a flute trio, which was good. They had a couple. Of, they yeah. had a duet. They had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a nice time. You sit right there. Was it a doll? Apart. Was it huh? the duet? Now, was it was it Dolly Kenny Rogers? Uh, no, they had a. Uh, oh. Actually, the duet. It was weird because the duet did this. They 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 came out. They did a thing together. Then they mm -hmm. each did a solo thing, and then they came back and okay. oh, and I thought of you. They did the uh, they did Desperado. Oh, see, nice. Yeah, I was thinking. Oh, they Dave did much better this than Desperado. Absolutely. Desperado going on. I love it. So Fantastic. thank you to the good folks of Fruitport for having me out to judge the talent show last night. And uh, there, there's the shirt right there. Sounds, Fruitport sounds old like old fashioned a, days all weekend. Yeah. Get out there and enjoy the carnival rides and the fun atmosphere and everything. Did you, did, did you enjoy any of the carnival rides? I uh, I refrained from carnival rides last night. Okay. I don't want to I don't want to peak too early. Um, right. We, we're going to be in that's the Fruitport a, a, parade on Monday. Mm -hmm. As a, remember, I invited you. Yeah, and I appreciated that. Once again, I'm otherwise engaged. Yeah, of course but, you are. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for thinking of me. Otherwise engaged to your couch. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the support, well, man. Hey, Glad you're there on my team. Glad you're I'm there to help. I'm always there for you. Always there. Always. Always there. I'm standing by. I may be 50, 45 miles away, but I am there in spirit. Right. Always. Just for you. I'm not there in spirit for many other people. No. I've noticed. Consider yourself blessed. I consider myself part of the family. I really do. Very good. Roll some news All or right. something, would you? Okay. North Korea reportedly closing its nuclear testing site. Actually, you've had reports that they're blowing it up. On the Wednesday, journalists were invited to watch the shutdown of the area that had conducted half a dozen nuclear tests over the last decade. The shutdown comes ahead of a planned summit between Kim Jong-un and President Trump next month. We'll see if that comes off. Uh, there's some kind of... Is this the one that's blown up already, or is this the one that they're think, blowing up now? I think they're blowing it up now. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. All right, well. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Have to wait and see. Sure. National Football League owners have issued a new policy requiring players to stand for the national anthem if they are on the field when it's being played. Now, Commissioner Roger Goodell said uh, the change was unanimously approved by owners on Wednesday. The NFL initially started requiring players to be on the field back in 2009 after signing a marketing deal with the military. Now they don't have to be on the field. Right. But if they're going to be on the field, if they, you know, kneel, they protest, then the, the team could face fines. I don't know if individual players will face fines. But uh, bottom line, this, this wasn't about – this isn't about uh, prejudice. This isn't about anything other than money. This is about the NFL understanding who its core audience is, who right. its base is. And, you know, you, you had a, a ratings drop. Uh, in part in because of these protests over the last couple of years. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. You can't, it's, it's, it's an instance where I think the, the owners are actually saving the players from themselves because the players ultimately will cost themselves money by yeah. doing this. However, well, even if you think they're well-intentioned, maybe they are, I'm not going to say one way or the other, but um, the, this way the owners step in and they take all the political heat, but they don't care because bottom line is this is good this rule is good for their business and ultimately good for the players. Mm -hmm. And I, I know the NFL is being charged with like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they're racist, this, right. The NFL has created more black millionaires than any industry in American history. I mean, that's just a fact. So um, 
you know, when you're a player and you're protesting, you got the right to protest. But the problem is you're wearing an NFL uniform. You're not just representing you anymore. You're representing the owner. You're representing the league. And, you know, there, there's there's that line there. You and I, you know, when when we were working at radio stations, you know, we it's not like we could uh, – we could protest on air. Most people can't protest at their job. So I, I don't think there's really much controversy in this. All right. I guess then I would ask too, that during the national, and, and you know, I'm, I, are they going to stop selling beer during the national anthem? You know, that's a good point. That's an actually good. Are I think they're looking selling into t-shirts. Are they going to stop, you know, all, should, all uh, of that should come to an end. I, I don't, that's I, what I think I, they're see, talking here's about. The thing. I don't get all wrapped up in the NFL cause I don't care. I, I, I just, right. It's not my sport. I it's I just, okay. ugh, don't like it. Don't like and I, I don't like basketball even more. I, I just I can't take the noise. I don't like the atmosphere. I, I don't think it's all that exciting. It does just doesn't do anything for me. Okay. You're but, the exception, but okay. I mean, I it, maybe so, but you know, I'm looking at it like this. I'm looking at it in the long term. I think the damage has been done, and I think that the NFL's got a long road to hoe to get back to where they were presence wise. I and now I'm going to say this too. I don't think it is is I don't think it's as hit as NASCAR is, because if you look at NASCAR right now with all and it's got nothing to do with protest or anything like that. I'm talking about when you get these major entities, these huge huge bodies of sanctioning bodies of sports. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a while to repair what's been what's been done. You know right. NASCAR itself. I read an article not too long ago with all the rule changes and all the different mm-hmm. angles NASCAR has taken and yada yada yada. Somebody said that. NASCAR is becoming as irrelevant as horse racing. I mean, that is wow. That's I mean, fascinating. But have you watched the NASCAR race lately? So I, I yeah, Dude. I have. I couldn't even tell you who won the who won the Daytona this year. Which stands you know. are empty. Yeah, stands are empty, and they're but, taking away seats at every track. Michi- Michigan, yeah. Michigan Speedway, I know, has removed about seventy thousand seats. Mm-hmm. They've just taken them right out, so they don't well, look like they're so undersold. And the the thing of it is, is that when you're dealing with these sports on this massive of a level, or mm-hmm. when you're dealing, let's 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 change it to something we know a little bit better. Uh, a radio show that's got a huge national massive following, take a Rush Limbaugh or a Hanley or something like that. He loses half his audience. It's going to take a while for them to gain him back. Right. So I think the NFL. I mean, where they're where they're doing this kind <coughs> of step to, kind of you know, uh, get their audience back a little bit. I think it's mm-hmm. going to take a while. Yeah. It really is. See, I don't, I don't think it – well, here's, here's what you also have to keep in mind about the NFL. The NFL is the monolith. The NFL is the money-making machine. It dominates everything. I mean, the NFL draft, I mean, even with the ratings decline, the NFL draft, people not even watching a game, watching players be picked to play, yeah. not an actual game, the draft gets better ratings than a Major League Baseball game or an NBA regular season game. Right. It's, it dwarfs that. I mean, all the sports really have seen a, a decline in range just because we have more entertainment options now. Yep. So it's 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 more of a it's more of a narrow window. I uh, used to, you know, your options used to be limited, and now they're not. I mean, the, to me, the protest it didn't impact whether or not I was going to watch the game. I understand it did for some people, but um, once again, it, whether you're the NFL or whether the NBA, or whether you're the National Hockey League. Uh, which congratulations, Las Vegas expansion team in the Stanley Cup Finals. How about Holy that? Holy cow! Right. Um, you you've got to know your audience. The NFL is usually one of the reasons I think they'll be able to get this back a little quicker. Is they're pretty proactive when it comes to taking on stuff like this, mm-hmm. and they understand their audience I think better than most sports leagues, which is why they which why they they've been the dominant force for years. We shall see. So how we'll it goes. see though. Your your point is well taken though. Thank you, sir. Well articulated. Very, dare I say, political. No. I don't know. No, no. it was just analytical. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, that was just no, looking at audience, massive no. audience size, you know. Right. No, it was good. Yeah. It was yeah. Good point. Finally, Michigan motorists would have to allow three feet of clearance while passing a bike under ridiculous legislation passed by the state Senate. Senate also voted to require teen drivers to learn about laws pertaining to cyclists as part of their driver's education course. Michigan, one of 11 states with no safe passing laws. I've gone nuts. I've on the verge of developing an aneurysm over this because it's so stupid. My problem is this. It's not an enforceable law. Okay. okay? It's not just that I think bikes don't belong on the road, which they don't. If you're going to be on the road, be on the 
very, very far side, okay, because it's for cars. And you also have these things called bike paths. Think about using that. But once again, this is a dumb law because you can't enforce it. Stop passing laws that you can't enforce. It's stupid, and it's a waste of taxpayers' time. Now, when you get in the house, and that's probably going to happen, you need to do something about wasting time on unenforceable, stupid laws. Good Lord Almighty. Okay. Well, let's not count any chickens before they hatch. Okay, I'm not. I'm just saying. There's a lot of work to do, and there's a lot, there's right. a lot that can come up between now and November, so I don't know. But, hey, wh- <laughs> Thank wait, you for but your that, confidence, that's my... though. But, but here's the thing. W- whether you agree or disagree with the law, you can agree with this law. It may even be a good thing. I'm not... You, why would you pass a law that you can't do anything, you cannot enforce? What is the point? To I say think, that you care? I think. This shows that I care about bicycle safety. I think that you may be looking at it from maybe the wrong angle. Okay. Enlighten let's me. say Let's say an accident does happen. Okay. You're clearly not three feet away from a bicyclist. No, 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 no. That's not necessarily the case. Bike could swerve into you. You could get somebody on their mm-hmm. bike, and they're doing this thing, and, you know, they swerve into you. No, no, that's okay. not. All see, right. you're automatically blaming the car and not the bicyclist. I was I was just bringing up an instance. That's a that's a that's an almost valid point. All right. Well, it's thank an you for, almost valid point. Thank you for squashing that. Uh, <laughs> sports. <laughs> Tigers beat Minnesota, riding the crest of a one-game winning streak. Yay! There's still seven games under 500. Coming back. Cubs lose. Cubs lose. Cubs lose. They fall to Cleveland one nothing. Once again, Washington and Vegas Stanley Cup is set. Still four teams left in the NBA playoffs. So. Uh, uh, ba- uh, hockey and uh, the NBA starting to wind down, but Las Vegas first expansion team ever. You know what the odds were? They were five hundred to one wow. to win the Stanley Cup going into this year, and that is impressive. I don't usually talk hockey, but that uh, for an expansion team getting in the Stanley Cup, I, that's never happened in a major sports league. Wow, ever. Wow, incredible. I have to throw one more hockey story in. Uh, Go. Uh, the Lumberjacks have uh, have, have got to say goodbye to John Van Beesbrook who is the uh, oh. Hall of Fame uh, goalie that's been the general right. manager of the Lumberjacks. He's going mm-hmm. up to team. He's going up to USA Hockey, and he's going to be the guy oh. picking the Olympians. Oh, very cool. How's that for cool? Nice. Yeah, awesome. So, going to miss John, but it's a great uh, opportunity for him. And uh, it was, you know, it was pretty cool to work with a, a, a Hall of Fame hockey goalie for Absolutely, you know, a few years. Absolutely, man. I, I, I'm going to tell you what, man. Someday – I'm gonna to have to write a book about my years at the LC Walker Arena and the people I've met and the in the just mm. just through that hockey team. Unbelievable. Yeah. What a seventeen years was that was seventeen years I was there this year. Yeah. Very cool. Have yourself a great Thursday. Thanks. See ya.